Hello, this is Christian Kravenhoft from Liverpool again. Uh, this is my second video of the day. I have been requested to solve the problem uh, of uh, um, solve one or more problems involving uh, laterally loaded piles. I'll solve one problem. Again, just to uh, give you a feel for how to set up the problem and um, some of the typical results uh, and um, for the pile I'm going to use this to model the pile I'm going to use this n prism tool that I introduced in the previous video that's a discrete cylinder with n sides and I'm going to since um, this is sort of a quick example I'm going to just use 12 sides um, for the uh, to model the pile uh, and I'm going to put the pile base of the pile here at the origin 0 comma 0 comma 0 I am going to uh, have a radius of 0.5 so a diameter of 1 meter and I'm going to make the height um, I'm going to have if say 5 meters below ground and 10 meters above ground so a total height of 15 meters so that's the pile with with 12 sides and um, then for the soil and um, I am going to use the box tool to basically define the soil um, so we can do it in two goes uh, we don't have to but let's just do it in two goes so first the soil from the, um, the base of the pile and let's make it something like 20 by 20 and then a height of 5 so here we have it, um, the soil pile, and you should be able to see the base of the pile. And then we would want some soil here as well below the pile. And again, I can make that at, to a depth of 5 meters. So I enter a height of minus 5. Um, so here is, is the, complete, the complete problem, complete geometry. And what I now need to do is um, assign materials. So for the soil, I will again use the Tresca material. I'll say this is an undrained total stress analysis. Uh, the Tresca material, make it a it is kind of soft clay, an SU of 50. And um, I then uh, need to um, get access to the pile part of the pile underneath the soil in order to assign material to that and I can do that in several ways um, one way is to basically hide this soil layer so that I um, now can get access to, to both parts of the pile and I'm going to use the rigid material um, and I'm going to say this is a concrete pile for so unit rate of, of 23 and um, unhide that. I should say you can as well use this transparency, you can make it transparent and um, in that way you uh, can uh, get access to, uh, the, um, to the underground. Okay. Now so that is, is it with respect to materials and geometry, standard fixities. And then I'm going to apply a load up here, a lateral load at the top of the pile. And I'm going to just rotate things like that. And I'm going to apply the load, a, a purely lateral load in the X direction. And I select the surface up here. I have unselected solid selection over here, so I can point to the surface and select just that. And then to features, multiply distributed load, x direction, 1 and 0 in the other two directions. And you'll see now there is a problem because uh, the um, loads actually point opposite to the, to the x direction. But if you look closely, there is a local coordinate system that has appeared up here again red blue green 
um, and that local coordinate system is the default one used when assigning load to surfaces. But I can switch that to the global system, that is the system down here, so that we now have a, a load uh, of one in the uh, x direction, the global x direction. And that's it. Um, and we are then ready to solve. It's a limit analysis. And <coughs> we'll use the next element again, a thousand of those, and we'll use three adaptivity steps as well. Run the analysis and let's see what happens. And you'll see here, if you look at the number of elements that's actually produced, that number tends to be quite a bit higher than what I have actually requested. So I request to start with a thousand elements and then uh, to finish off with a thousand elements as well. So in the course of three adaptive iterations, basically rearrange a thousand elements. But you'll see that the actual number of elements produced tends to be quite a bit higher than that, something like 2,600 um, eventually in the third adaptive iteration and a collapse multiplier of five, 405 and that needs to be of course multiplied by the uh, area of pile which is pi divided by 4 times the radius squared and the radius is 1 so a uh, load, maximum lateral load in this case of 318.49 kilonewton. And if we look at the final, oh, the final situation, well, that kind of looks more or less as expected, uh, if not exactly as expected. You can see there is potentially a bit of a problem in that the soil sticks to the back of the pile here um, that is, is, is fully consistent with the model we have assumed but it may not uh, be exactly uh, as expected so we could have a look at the interface between the pile and the soil um, and hide that and then we can get access to the, this pile soil interface. We can select these parts of the pile uh, and then eventually apply a shear joint. And these shear joints are, for those of you again who are familiar with the G2, it works exactly in the same way as, as in G2. Um, so when I apply the shear joint, you see it turn green there. <coughs> it basically, the material that's applied at the interface here is the first material in the list uh, over here. So um, that is not necessarily what, what we um, want in all cases. And what, we, what I really should have done as well to start with is to duplicate the Tresca material. And let's make that other color, say blue, uh, and I can then choose a smaller SU uh, at the interface. Uh, even I could choose zero, so a perfectly, perfectly smooth pile. And I would then just have to select um, all of these again in order to basically uh, apply. Is blue interface material. You can call that Tresca basic interface. 
okay. And I could of course, maybe I should even, you could say, um, do the same at the base of the pile. Again, the shear joint, that turns green because the MC basic, the green MC basic is the first in the list. But I can make that blue, unhide everything and we have the problem again. And let's solve. <coughs> see how that looks as you can see the soil and the pile actually separate here behind the pile um, the, so the interface is perfectly smooth and, and we have this separation which is which is um, which is of course on the safe side, as as, appo as as opposed to the case where we um, assume that we have a full bond between the um, the soil and the pile. And as I've said before, these analyses do take quite a bit of time. Um, there's just no way around that. 3D analysis is just a lot more time consuming than 2D analysis. Um, so our strategy here with G3 has been twofold. First of all, use very accurate finite elements. We've developed some new elements among them, be it this mixed element and secondly uh, use mesh electricity and in that way you can actually in far most cases get away with a very moderate number of elements uh, so the solution we, we have done here um, and again yeah, there's a clear separation at the back of the pile here between the soil and um, the pile and the limit load of 353 and if we compare that to what we had before well um, well, we have a, uh, a fairly slight reduction in the limit load from 318 to 277 kilonewton as a result of modifying this uh, interface. So there you have it. Um, and I could of course have used more elements and um, if I'd done that you would have seen that I would have had a slight improvement in the, in the limit load but uh, really not um, all that much I, I'm quite uh, confident of but that's of course something um, that can and also should be verified <coughs> so see you next time <laughs>